And next up, we will have uh, Petteri Rätu uh, on stage giving us a, a lecture on basic income, which is uh, uh, the central topic of today. And this was a very, very beneficial uh, lecture to sort of frame the the current situation where one of the answers could be uh, basic income uh, uh, implemented as a global project. Uh, Peter Ratu uh, is a Master of Science in Engineering, also a professional in systems and uh, operations uh, research, but For today's uh, program, the most important thing to say is that he is the current chairperson in BN Finland, that is the Basic Income Earth Network. And that is an organization that brings people together uh, to discuss and uh, forward basic income locally, but also uh, internationally. And today... Petteri Ratu is going to introduce us to the concept, the very co- basic concept of basic income. And from there on, after his lecture, we will have a, a short break of 15 minutes, and then we will return for the last item on to uh, today's program, that is a panel discussion uh, where we discuss basic income as a global possibility. So, uh, welcome on stage and we have everything, it seems, ready for the presentation. So, I'll just hand the floor over to you, Petter Ratu. Thank you. Thank you. If you can hear me, it seems like the audio system is coming. Oh, let's see, start a stopwatch there. I have 40 minutes. The previous was an hour, so I'm a bit shorter, but since this is an intro, uh, We can cover that, I think, in good time. So, uh, I was already a bit introduced, but I'll still be a bit of myself more so. So, I'm the current chair of BN Finland, and uh, I have been that for a couple of years now, since 2019. Uh, the association isn't politically aligned, but uh, for uh, full disclosure, I'm also a politician, not currently in any office, but also active in the Greens in Finland uh, as the chair of the Greens for uh, Science and Technology, the uh, treasurer, sorry, not the chair. And uh, for our association, uh, it was founded in 2011. There was a Finnish Citizens Initiative uh, back then when the Citizens Initiative uh, system was new and introduced in Finland to try and get uh, UBI into Finnish. Uh, um, through that process, um, it did not reach the required amount of signatures, but um, we are thinking of doing a redo or planning to do a redo next year to see now that the system is much more familiar, it's maybe easier to reach the required 50,000 signatures. But let's see how that goes. Uh, so BN, it was already said, is Basic Income Earth Network. Uh, it is... Legally speaking, uh, um, established in the UK, uh, it's a non-profit in the UK, but the uh, main function is the yearly seminar uh, that is uh, handled. It was has been physical, it was in Tampere a couple years back, um, but last year it was also available online, plus in uh, Australia was the last thing. So um, our purpose is to... Um, Increase discussion about UBI, universal basic income, and advance the implementation in Finland, and of course follow international UBI initiatives. Can, uh, find our website there later on if you want to find more information about that. Blogs and such, and social media, of course, as well. So let's go into the definition of UBI. There is no generally accepted definition of UBI. Um, scholars do tend to use similar definitions, um, but the ones I'm using here is done by uh, Basic Income Network and has five key points, which I'll cover uh, point by point here. Um, I will give a bit of a global uh, sense, but I will also touch on the Finnish side of it because it may be more easier to relate what it means in practice uh, in Finland, but none of this about the definition is Finnish specific. 
So the first um, attribute, it is periodic. So you cannot, for example, get 20,000 euros as a lump sum, and then you're supposed to live off that for a certain period. It must be paid at regular intervals. For in the Finnish context, we tend to pay our social security payments currently monthly on uh, 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 various days of the month by Kela, but uh, they, in this there wouldn't be any specific time frame, uh, but it would have to be daily, weekly or so as it is. In most countries, um, be at least monthly, because let's say for actual rent that people have to cover, tend to be following monthly, but there are also countries that pay their rent weekly. So there are the country specifics in cash flows that would make more sense for a certain country, the, how often you pay the UBI. Um, the, um, when we get to the point of basic, um, that is in basic, it means it needs to cover your basic needs, which I'll get to later, the level of uh, funding there. But it comes ties back to this periodic thing that uh, should cover everyone their uh, cash flows uh, for the month. And they, of course, vary very widely country by country basis. But in Finland, we uh, mostly would focus on housing and then uh, groceries, uh, electricity and so forth. Whatever are the basically the bills everyone pays monthly that would be here. And then we get to the cash payment point that it is paid in an appropriate medium exchange. So basically money. Um, there are also social security systems in the world, um, for example, U.S. Uh, meal vouchers and these kind of systems, historically you have been able to find, but uh, it does not fit the definition of UBI if you get pay, uh, given a paper that says you can go to the local K-market and buy your groceries. Uh, the definition includes that you are receiving cash and you can select whichever store you go to and uh, have the freedom to select how do you spend the money. Um, it does not control that if you want to choose it and spend it on booze, then you can spend it on booze. It might have adverse effects on your other abilities to consume, but UBI doesn't take a value stance on that. If you reach your UBI and spend it on booze, it fits the definition. Fine. It's of course not the goal, and I get to the um, actual like um, uh, results of uh, UBI experiments and so forth later that uh, there is of course this conception that uh, it results in people being passive but I'll get to that later down the run in the um, presentation and what um, actual evidence there is of that. So individual um, there's a quite a lot of variance around the world on how we structure societies, uh, as we saw in the previous discussion, but also on the structural social security level or taxation level. There are, widely speaking, two approaches. There are uh, maybe of most relevance here. Even in Europe, there's variance here. Whether you look at things on an individual or on a household level. There are many taxation systems that, uh, for example, tax uh, uh, both adults, let's say a two adult household, uh, on their joint income. In Finland, we are very much an individualist system that uh, uh, if I make 100k and uh, 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 my partner makes a 10k, they're still taxed separately and there aren't really tax benefits across. Uh, but in the UBI definition is that we both get the same amount of money. Um, into the household. And if you choose to live with five uh, adults in a commune, then everyone will be receiving the, uh, uh, let's say, um, for the sake of the argument, be a 1,000 euros. And you have uh, a commune and you have a, quite a same rent as two people there. But you, one household receiving, then 2,000, one would be 5,000. That is part of this. It looks on an individual level. The Finnish system has been going all the time towards more and more individual uh, uh, social security structures. Um, there are not that many um, household level uh, systems left. And the main one is the income support system. For those Finns who know it uh, maybe better as Toimeentulotuki, uh, is the main one that is uh, calculated on a household level. So we do operate our current social security system on 
a mixture of individual and per household benefits. But from a UBI perspective, um, we would be going um, to an individual. I will get the practical implementations first, but uh, just to say here that uh, full UBI uh, is much more in the future than uh, uh, some mixed system. And, but universal, pay to all without the means test. So in our current social security system, um, if you want unemployment benefits, you are required to at least pretend uh, to the unemployment office that uh, you do the actions that they do. Uh, hopefully, of course, of, uh, of course, find work. Um, but the UBI is universal and it does not... The only requirement is that you get it going uh, in a practical level uh, is being assigned, uh, being entitled to, let's say, in Finland, Finnish Social Security. Um, the pay-to-all aspect and bureaucracy would be involved in moving between countries, for example. Um, then we'd have to apply again because it's not come to later. These are all still going to be national systems. And to emphasize the point, uh, it does not require you to uh, apply for a job or uh, you uh, do anything. Uh, you could also choose to save it or do whatever you wanted with it. No one would be controlling the uh, amount. And uh, ties into unconditionality. It is paid without a requirement to work or to demonstrate willingness to work. Also, it's part of universal and unconditional. Um, the Practical implementations of these uh, that are generally accepted are, of course, some conditions like age. The uh, UBI uh, models that are accepted to be UBI models generally do not require uh, that you would be pay a newborn a thousand euros if the adult sum is a thousand euros, or that uh, uh, you would necessarily uh, <coughs> be. Uh, Using a pension system, uh, implementing on the pension system, because in in practice, for example, in Finland, uh, if we look at our pension system and what is the guaranteed minimum pension, it is much higher than any of the models that are presented by uh, political parties. So let's say you have a 600 euro UBI. Yes, you can. Uh, of course, technically make the model be so that it's also given to pensioners, but it has no practical effect because every pension in Finland is guaranteed. Uh, now, and The sum is 800 something around there. So if there is a UBI that is lower than that, it has no practical effect uh, of people of pension age. You can still, of course, change the name that they get UBI plus pension, but it, uh, it doesn't change anything in that age bracket. Those were the five qualities, and maybe the may, one important distinction is when we talk about UBI. So, what is uh, a partial UBI and what is uh, then actually a UBI? These are in Finnish, especially uh, mixed because uh, we tend to just call perustulo, uh, which is uh, basic income, as translated for anything. That, but in practice, most U often means partial UBI. So if we think about the UBI as the level sufficient to meet a person's basic needs, then let's say you live in Helsinki and the model proposes 650 euros. We can very quickly see that 650 euros is not going to pay a market rate rent in Helsinki. So if the idea is that you could live just off the UBI, then the 650 is, is not going to cut it. So that model in practice is partial universal basic income. And uh, the, that's why the models that are discussed uh, by the Greens and Left Alliance are partial of what I, or, or is the Left Alliance generally uh, proposes a bit higher sums than the Greens. Um, and I come to later there, uh, in the terms of purchase power, there are examples of uh, UBI implementations in the world. The uh, In, so in Finland, um, how you could u implement UBI, and it most likely would be paid by Kela because of the existing infrastructure and at least monthly. In the current model, uh, 
uh, of automation. This, as I said, isn't required, but uh, it's a personal preference of mine that you would pay it more often than monthly because there isn't really any uh, cost except the cost of wire transfer, which is negligible to uh, pay it more often than once per month, uh, let's say once per week. Uh, or then uh, you could entertain thoughts of paying a bit b bigger sum in the beginning of the month and the rest spread out later in the month so that you can cover the rent more easily. And uh, where would we get with the sums required? So uh, in Finland, let's say, uh, so we talk about an example first of a one-person household uh, with on income support in Finland, so uh, someone who has to, gets is entitled to toimeentulo tuki. You have to pay your rent, let's say uh, seven seven fifty uh, for rent, and then in toimeentulo tuki you get about five hundred euros for um, uh, spending money that covers most of this. So we quickly see that the, to get UBI in Finland it would have to be more than a thousand euros per month. And this comes back to the reason why the models by, proposed by the Greens and the Left Alliance are less than a thousand euros, because funding, which I'll also cover later in more detail, gets tricky. Um, uh, if you um, see everyone would get a thousand euros, so 10,000 uh, 10, euros per person, you uh, multiply it by the five million people here. Not everyone is, of course, 18 years old, but you do pretty quickly see that the sum required equals the state budget for a year that if you would pay this. So you'd have so, uh, somewhere need to find, uh, reorganize the cash flows to the magnitude of the current state budget for a year. So that's why uh, no one is proposing in Finland uh, uh, UBI models because the cash flows required are just way too big. Um, it would need to basically a total total rethinking of our taxation system uh, to say that. So that's why it is realistic that this is a very long-term view, that this is something we would aim for and start by partial UBI. And then the goal is to slowly increase the sum uh, going forward. Um, if we generally look at, of course, the amount of social security payments uh, or the social security net uh, backing from agrarian countries, that has grown if we take a longer view. So there is, uh, of course, a lot of econ uh, logical discussion about whether economic growth can uh, continue within the limits of our planet. That would, of course, define the cash flows. But uh, uh, if uh, we are able to solve that, there's of course no uh, reason that we can't assume that uh, in a longer perspective uh, we would have the financing to pay uh, UBI in the Finnish levels. And, and uh, note on the implementation on negative income tax, uh, it is not UBI, but it's at least exactly the same results. So that's why they are often bundled together in discussions. This is just a difference in administration. Uh, it also requires a income register uh, real time. Uh, and uh, let's say you're a third world, uh, the um, country even in Europe or in much of the developing world, you are very unlikely to have a digitalized systems where everyone gets their monthly uh, income recorded that is required. So a negative income tax works so that the, the tax authority looks at, okay, this month you made a thousand euros in income, so you don't need to be topped up, but this month you only made a hundred, so let's top you up uh, with 900 euros. So for this to work, it requires the uh, in, in information in real time available about the uh, um, uh, ta for example, salaries that you made and any other income. Uh, we only have had this system for some years now. Uh, and we, we can, of course, see that, for example, from the city of Helsinki and their salary paying, that it's not a perfect system in Finland. So uh, even if it's, if it's in theory the same system working perfectly, we can see that uh, there is a minor uh, downside to negative income tax in situations like the city of Helsinki that, uh, of course, from an uh, individual perspective, since they don't get the information into the system, you would get extra cash. 
because it shows up you uh, basically a status of a person without uh, any income, even if they, for example, paid it. But the pro- problem comes down later in the uh, in the uh, down the road when uh, you then correct the system because then the cash flows have to move. So. Uh, then the, uh, what has happened around the world and what kind of experiences have we found uh, in, in practice? Let's uh, start closer to home uh, here in, in Finland a couple years back. Um, there was a basic income trial. Um, so what first uh, needs to be understood is who were selected to the income trial in, in Finland. It was uh, uh, for the sake of... Uh, making the implementation easy and there was uh, a first in Kela uh, the uh, they had a research plan that would have uh, covered much larger sum of people but then the politicians decided that let's take a bulk of the money away and do a smaller thing uh, so it doesn't cost as much uh, so that's why it was then in the end uh, limited to long term unemployed people who were on Kela's um, already receiving uh, unemployment benefits from Kela. And uh, the goal there of the government at the time, uh, Keskustan, Kokomus and so forth, uh, was to see uh, they were interested in the employment effects. So whether this would um, incentivize people to work more. But given the uh, like prior knowledge uh, that and the trial, of course, the recipients know that you're going to only be receiving it for uh, two years in this case. We already know that, let's say, you would have a job available in another city. You live in uh, Helsinki and someone offers you a job in Tampere and you have family. You're not, and you think that the UBI is necessary for me to uh, take the job in another city, but are you going to move your family to another city if you know this trial is going to end in two years and I still need it in five years, you're probably not going to do it. Or then we also know that in our long-term unemployed, uh, on the, in the statistics, many people are receiving the unemployment benefit, but in practice uh, they would be more suitable in some kind of other uh, a program in the sense that uh, they might have health issues that would need to be taken care of first before they're employable. Let's say you're an alcoholic. That's why the reason you're been. Uh, if you continue to be an alcoholic and have UBI, you're still not employable by anyone. Uh, so the cash transfer there is not going uh, it's, to... It's not the problem that you don't have the financial incentives. No matter how much you would be paid or... Uh, how, much, how little you would need to be paid if you have health issues that you're not going to be able to do any work. It doesn't make any difference. But uh, this comes back to what results we did see in the Finnish trial. is that the, So there's the uh, register base that we, we looked at, uh, 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 the employment things, but then also a survey base. So what did the uh, recipients and participants uh, in the study report was much more happiness and then, uh, uh, for example, a decrease in depression. This comes down to the fact that uh, the Finnish system, the long-term unemployed, uh, often then in the uh, receiving end of the uh, uh, bureaucracy uh, that uh, they have to report, and usually the kind of people who are the least equipped to deal with the bureaucracy. and then it at least uh, takes um, away the uh, pressure that I do something wrong and then I don't receive my benefits. So that very fast showed up in the uh, like uh, their re- uh, reported um, state of being. Um, I have to also say that uh, uh, from that perspective that they, they wasn't, uh, there wasn't, for example, a um, phenomenon that they would have dropped out of the uh, programs of unemployment be- uh, benefits that uh, they still continued. Uh, for example, if we talk about the staying in the sofa effect, uh, even if there wasn't a, a noticeable employment effect, but it also, uh, it was not better or it wasn't worse. It wasn't any different. So if we think that the effect is that you stay on the sofa, this study also shows that that doesn't happen because 
uh, it was not to any di party. There was no noticeable effect to any particular direction. People didn't become more passive, but they also didn't become more active. So, if the uh, if your uh, the, uh, research question is the whether people become more passive, then here is evidence against that. So then, from a uh, more global perspective, I took the example of I uh, Iran here. It's just a funny case in the sense that they didn't um, intend to introduce UBI, but uh, they had large subsidy for buying fuel, which they converted into a cash subsidy. Uh, because it wasn't feasible anymore to continue giving people uh, cheap uh, gasoline. And the, uh, when you converted this to a purchase power, they spent more than a thousand euros per month because uh, buying stuff there was so, so cheap that even this uh, smaller uh, cash transfer, when you convert it into finished purchasing level, so actually uh, we're talking about the levels of some that is actual UBI. Uh, it ran until 2016. And again, there was no evidence that people would take themselves out of the labor force. Uh, there is evidence in some uh, smaller groups, uh, for example, self-employed, that they worked, worked more. So uh, again, um, this goes back to the uh, uh, bucket of trials that uh, would this become uh, UBI make people passive? No, really. Um, trials have been ongoing since 60s and 70s. I think the North Americans have done them back since then. Uh, these days there are uh, things going on, uh, I think in Kenya, I think India, uh, been following too closely, but uh, there are private parties also running this because uh, in countries with uh, 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 where the amount, uh, cost of living is low and you take, let's say, a village, it's quite easy to run these experiments even with private money since um, uh, if you're talking about people who need uh, 10 euros a month or so to cover food, it's easy to, of course, from the Western world, uh, whether this, coming back to the previous uh, talk, is of course uh, Westerners experimenting in uh, third world countries a good or bad thing, I want an opinion on too much now, but it is also happening at the moment. And the, the Iranian scheme ended in 2016. So from a, a global perspective, um, so if we talk about competence, uh, and if you wanted the global uh, UBI, we don't have a global government, so it's quite obvious that no one can legislate UBI uh, in the world, except if you create a treaty. But we haven't been able to create a treaty to uh, uh, binding in a binding way reduce emissions. Par a Paris Agreement is just everyone uh, letting know their intentions to maybe do something at some point. Uh, these are the plans that we do it. So. It's uh, quite utopian that would we have a binding treaty that would uh, legislate UBI uh, around the world. Um, but even in the European Union, the competence is uh, in the member states. There's some movement there, but uh, there was a citizens initiative that the European uh, uh, be, uh, basic income Earth network people tried. Uh, the first version got rejected by the commission because uh, it tried to, uh, with the European Citizens Initiative, have UBI in uh, EU and the text wasn't allowed because there's no competence. And then the next version, it was just that the commission uh, recommends to the member states to advance this. It wasn't exactly like this, but it was quite convoluted, but that was accepted as a citizens initiative, but it is like a clear cut uh, example that the uh, in Brussels or in the EU bureaucracy, they regard this as mostly a member state issue. The uh, Finland often is seen um, as a front runner in uh, um, the basic income. Uh, the uh, trial that we had had quite a lot of good publicity around the world, but uh, following uh, actively the um, discussion about UBI, I think it's been quite stagnant since then. Uh, there hasn't this this uh, current government uh, 
uh, has in their platform to implement a negative income tax trial. Um, we can all, uh, all of those who follow pol- politics over this discussion, we can clearly see that uh, it is not happening. There is only a, some months left. Uh, so nothing has really happened during this government. You can, of course, maybe put some just excuses on it in the sense that being busy with pandemic and so forth. But uh, the practical reason is that the ministry that it falls under is uh, uh, has the minister from Keskusta and uh, their position hasn't really been, they haven't really been interested in advancing this uh, advancing this negative income tax trial, it was they officially did announce moth. You could see the, what it in practice meant mothballing it some time ago. Uh, the the uh, trial that is, but it would have been an interesting trial because if we talk about the trials globally, there generally isn't. Uh, uh, that would be nice to see is when they target the taxation system uh, and then are targeted to the well-off people. Because we have wealth of evidence uh, from people, uh, for example, the Finnish unemployed or then uh, uh, people from um, uh, countries with lower uh, standard of living or cost of living. But to see the effects on, uh, for example, students or just your av- average workers. But that necessarily means that you must have the uh, uh, tax uh, rules uh, involved in it because to be realistic as I talk about financing, it necessarily also needs the tax component. So in for uh, the models in Finland is that the uh, situation for um, medium uh, person in work would not change at all. So uh, you receive the thousand euros or so, uh, or fee five hundred euros or so, but it just gets taxed away from you. So let's say you make three thousand uh, euros now uh, uh, before tax, and let's say your tax uh, is one third, so your net uh, income is two thousand euros. So let's say we change the system where there's a partial UBI of 500 euros, um, but then um, your tax uh, rates would go up, so you would get taxed 1,500 instead of the previous 1,000. And the net result is still that your cash in your bank account is 2,000 euros. It would, uh, uh, and your purchasing power is, is the same. So this is the way that we can finance the uh, partial UBI in Finland. That we change nothing from ma- the majority of the population's perspective. We just uh, have the benefit that when you become unemployed. Uh, you do not have to apply anything because you've all the time been receiving this 500 euros in your bank account. But when you're unemployed, that just continues. Uh, so there, you always know that it's changing regardless of anything. But to finance it, the taxes, of course, have to go up on the tax system. But the net result is the same from the average earners. Perspective. You can, of course, take value statements and it's not part of the U- UBI statements to at the same time do changes in the tax system. Uh, quickly on the fact that it doesn't have to be based on social security. Uh, there are other models that relate to UBI. Carbon dividend is a, for example, Canadians have a lot of thinking about this. So uh, let's say um, we raise the taxes on uh, uh, petrol and we collect the state coffers um, 1 million euros and there are uh, 1 million drivers let's say in Finland and we give everyone uh, 1 euro back uh, every month as a UBI. That means that if you drive the average amount your situation is still the same. If you drive a lot then of course you're worse off. If you drive less uh, then you gain a net benefit. Um, But this makes it more socially acceptable to raise uh, taxes on, let's say, fuel, uh, because uh, the uh, people with lower purchasing power uh, are not harmed by this. They are actually usually gaming, gaining on it, because 
usually the argument about uh, against raising, let's say, taxes on petrol is, for example, how do uh, people on low incomes get to work uh, in the countryside? Because they, of course, realistically still have to drive there. There's no public transport. But if you had a, a carbon div a dividend there, uh, that would then compensate it for them. It can be uh, extended to any kind of external externalities uh, than uh, environmental taxes, and uh, can also be used in consumption taxes like that. Uh, this is easily ex uh, explained if you think about how our municipality taxes work. They are progressive, but every municipality has a fixed tax rate, let's say twenty percent. But it works so that there is a component uh, in our tax system, if you look at your tax decisions, where certain uh, X thousand euros is taken off as tax-free uh, part of your municipality taxes. That makes it progressive. This is the same effect that can be done with VAT, uh, that you return part of the VAT to people, to the account. Um, so let's say you pay VAT monthly, uh, you have the 2,000 euros, uh, let's say everything you have on it has VAT, so like 20% is, is 500 euros or so that you pay in VAT in all kinds of purchases. And uh, you get, then let's say a basic, uh, in VAT-based basic income back of 100 euros. So net you pay 400 euros. But if you're uh, a millionaire uh, making, let's say, 100,000 a month and you uh, put all that into your va uh, VAT, you necessarily going to spend more on VAT than the 500 euros that I said, but you still get the 100 euro back. So the net amount you pay on VAT is going to be progressive. It's the same effect as in your municipality taxes. And this same effect with UBI can be used on any fixed tax rate system to make it progressive. Uh, so in Finland, uh, for the funding part, uh, that uh, similar things can be found on the EU level and other things is that we already have in our constitution uh, the requirement those who cannot obtain the means necessary for life of dignity have the right to receive indispensable subsistence and care. So it's in, in Finland implemented by income support. Uh, so that system does need to exist. And uh, UBI is uh, uh, in, in our type of country uh, where we have a, mo a very complex system already, a simplific mostly simplification of the existing system. But then on a global perspective, in countries that have no social security net, it is of course building on uh, a new. So uh, it's a good thing to keep in mind that the problems we are solving with UBI are quite different from a Finnish perspective or from the perspective of Uh, countries that have uh, no existing social security system. I already went uh, into this in my uh, earlier part, but uh, uh, just to uh, give some more uh, fact-based backing on the, in, uh, the Greens order from the Information Service of Parliament in 2014 analysis that it's 560 a month that could be funded without changes to the net income of the average worker. It has since, of course, when, uh, with inflation gone up, it's like about 600 or so um, uh, uh, in these years. And if we think about this logistically, uh, that we want to pay everyone one euro per month, uh, that is easily achievable in current state finances. So we can clearly see that you go up and up and up at some point becomes a problem, uh, problematic point to that you have to change the current financing system. And uh, in this analysis found that it was about the 560. It's a bit, a quite convenient amount in the sense that that is the ballpark where we're talking about our unemployment benefits or housing benefits as individual benefits. So we could start replacing some of our benefits, let's say housing subsidies or unemployment benefits with already that amount. So wrap up since I have a couple uh, minutes left here. So in Finland, our social security uh, system is very complex. Uh, it is quite easy to fall through the cracks. Uh, a very common feature of our social security system is that it's not fraud, it's underuse. Uh, 
if we talk about the systems for uh, the middle classes, let's say taxation, we try to make it quite easy. If you're applying uh, for tax deductions, let's say homework deduction or so, you just uh, uh, let the tax authority know in a tax return, usually gets automatically approved by uh, no, uh, no human ever looks at it. But in our social security system, especially... Uh, uh, the, system, the more the system is geared towards either a small group of people, a minority, or then uh, the worse off they are, the more bureaucratic it becomes, which is an interesting uh, dynamic because those people are uh, the least equipped to handle it. Uh, for example, if you apply for the income support currently, you have to give your account statements for the whole period. And uh, the Kela, there's an employee in Kela that will read your account statement, check line by line, like, okay, what happened in this transaction and what happened in this transaction. So it's a very different world from a for, you know, tax authority uh, system. And so from the evidence that people will drop out of labor force that I already covered, so there is no ev evidence for that. Uh, and uh, there's a potential uh, implication and potential for here, at least in the increased happiness that we saw in the Finnish study. And uh, if you want further reading or uh, some further thoughts, uh, we created this uh, pamphlet uh, that released about a year ago, Basic Income as a Cornerstone of the Nordic Welfare State. Uh, on our website uh, that has various uh, uh, perspectives on UBI in terms of, for example, the uh, uh, United Nations Sustainable Development Goals or in terms of peace and, for example, that tie into uh, the topics of today. That is there. So, thank you. Thank you so much, Petteri Rätty. And now, as I mentioned, uh, we have a short break, uh, around 15 minutes, and then we will go back for panel discussion regarding the possibilities of a basic income implemented as a global project.